In this lesson, we'll look at chemical reactions and chemical equations. Chemical reactions are also referred to as chemical changes. This is where we start with some original substances and then we end up with new substances after the reaction is complete. Physical changes are changes that occur where it's the same substance before and after, like phase changes that we talked about earlier in the course. So how do you know if you are having a chemical reaction or a chemical change? Well, there are certain things that you can look for, such as the formation of a precipitate. So this is when you put two solutions together and a solid is formed. Uh, if a gas is produced, that's another sign of a chemical reaction. A permanent color change or some kind of energy change. Uh, heat released or absorbed will cause a change in temperature, uh, but it could also be light. Here are some photos showing some chemical reactions or chemical changes. Over here on the right, uh, this is the formation of a precipitate. You can see you've got a colorless solution in the test tube, and there's a colorless solution coming out of the pipette, and then a solid forms. Uh, eventually that solid will settle down to the bottom of the test tube. We also see a color change there when we have the formation of a precipitate. Over on the left here, we have silver nitrate solution and copper wire. And you can see a definite color change, right? We have a clear solution in the beginning and then a blue solution at the end. Uh, you can also see um, a substance has formed that is a different color than the copper wire was initially. In the lower right, you can see we start with an acid uh, in one of the test tubes and then uh, probably some calcium carbonate in the other test tube. Put them together, uh, we've got the evolution of a gas. And in the lower left, we just have the combustion of some wood. Uh, we've got some heat being given off there. Uh, definitely a temperature change occurring. When we have chemical reactions or chemical changes, we use chemical equations to describe them. On the left side of a chemical equation um, are the reactants. It's what we start with. And then on the right side of the equation are the products, the things that are produced throughout the course of a chemical reaction. Reactants and products are separated by an arrow. The arrow means yields. Please do not use an equal sign uh, in between the reactants and the products. This is not a mathematical equation. This is a chemical equation. So you can see a couple of examples of some chemical equations that are written. Uh, we use the uh, element symbols to represent elements and compounds. So instead of writing a sentence like, solid sodium reacts with chlorine gas to produce or to yield solid sodium chloride, we can write in a chemical equation to shorten that up. Also notice the uh, labels that are next to each of the chemical formulas, like uh, this little S right here stands for solid. Uh, we had a G right here for gas. Uh, we also can use an L for liquid, something like that. Uh, and then the little AQs here mean aqueous solution. And this is a solution where water is the solvent. So something, um, a solute uh, dissolved in water, the solvent will give you an aqueous solution. You might also see any number of things written up above the yield sign, a specific temperature, a pressure, uh, if a catalyst was used or if the reaction was heated, maybe just the word heat. Um, instead of the word heat, sometimes you might see a little triangle. Uh, that means that the reaction was heated. So now let's focus a little more on one of those signs of a chemical reaction, some kind of energy change. Energy is absorbed whenever the reactant bonds are broken. Energy is released anytime product bonds are formed. And so whichever one happens more is what you get to observe overall, and you will usually see some kind of change in energy for a chemical reaction. So here's an example of a chemical reaction with the molecules. So in this methane, we'd have to break these bonds here 
and in the oxygen, we'd have to break these bonds here so that the atoms can rearrange themselves. And then we get new bonds that are formed over here on the product side. So uh, carbon oxygen bonds here in the carbon dioxide and hydrogen oxygen bonds in the water. So whichever one happens more uh, energy wise, bond breaking or bond forming is the one that wins. And if we have an exothermic reaction, that means that more energy was released um, than was absorbed. And if we have an endothermic reaction, more energy absorbed than released. Here's how we can represent endothermic and exothermic reactions graphically. Uh, we start with energy here on our y-axis, a certain amount of energy for our reactants. If we see an increase in energy, that means energy is absorbed. That means this graph is endothermic. And on the right side, we start with a certain amount of energy for our reactants, and then our products have less energy. That energy then was released. This is exothermic. So hopefully now you know a little bit about chemical reactions and chemical equations and the energy changes that are involved.